Hi, and welcome to our visit to the SS Great Britain in the wonderful city of Bristol. And we'll discover why this is one of the city's most popular attractions. And why not subscribe so you don't miss any of our future travels. The city of Bristol is in the southwest of England and we'll have a few more videos from our three night visit so don't forget to click on that notification bell so you don't miss any of our content from the city but back to SS Great Britain and she can be found in the Great Western Docks in the place she was originally built and I'll pop a link in the description with more information on the tickets and where you can find her and so without further ado Let's take a look at SS Great Britain. And it seemed only fitting we take the ferry from Hanover Quay to see the ship. However, of course, you can walk to the museum. And if you're driving, there is a car park on site as well. Now, Janice is happiest when she's on the water. The daughter of a lighterman who worked on the Thames for many, many years. It's great to see so much history and renovation around Bristol's harbour, but we'll discover more of that in a later video. And time to be open, honest and transparent, we were given free tickets to the SS Great Britain by Visit Bristol, although what you'll see is a normal day at SS Great Britain. And once you pass through the ticket office and through the shop, you get your first sight of the great ship. And now time for our first fun fact. She launched in 1843 to be the first iron hulled propeller driven steamship but she wasn't completed until 1845 and the layout of the Great Western Docks give you a sense of that period and the next fun fact was that the man in charge of the overall design and construction was none other than Isambard Kingdom Brunel and she was built by the Great Western Steamship Company for the transatlantic journey across to New York and now back to the visitor experience of SS Great Britain. It offers something a little special. Now what is that? Best we send Janice in to explore. I'm not sure this is for ladies eyes. So the team here at SS Great Britain have created somewhat of an immersive experience. Now we descend into the dry dock where we can experience the glass sea above us. And this is the original dock that SS Great Britain was constructed in over 150 years ago. And as you'd expect, you do need to take a little care, but you are afforded some wonderful views of the hull of this ship. And it must have been truly amazing to work on this because nothing like this had been seen in the world before. There had been steel hull ships, there had been screw propellers, but never combined together, and never in such a grand scale. And it's from here you can appreciate the engineering that went into building this ship. I have to say, I really appreciate the glass sea above us. Visiting the dry docks is optional, but I wouldn't miss it. But if you're pressed for time, then perhaps you can come back a later date. Your tickets are valid for a whole year. And now let's take a look at the bow of this great ship and how sleek she looks, set in a glass sea. I think the restoration work, bringing her back to how she would have looked in 1845, is truly amazing especially when you look at the next part of the story. It's now just a short walk back to the Dockyard Museum, where you can find more of SS Great Britain's history and how she was recovered from the Falkland Islands in the 1970s by Sir Jack Arnold Hayward and brought back to her original docks. I really love the museum and I could have spent a lot longer here. What I liked about it was, it was truly something for all ages. From the immense history to the interactive exhibits where 
you could see how a ship's wheel operated. Something for kids, big and small. Okay, yes, I had a go. But the history is fascinating. After those few short years on the transatlantic run, she transferred people emigrating to Australia. And in 1881, her engines were removed and she was converted to a pure all-sail ship to haul coal around the world. And on her final journey, a fire rendered her beyond economic repair and she was towed to the Falkland Islands. Now it's time to join the SS Great Britain and we're arriving via the top deck. And one of the things you'll notice around the whole experience is there are plenty of staff willing to help and assist and provide you with additional information. And before us we see the first class passenger line on the top deck. No mingling for riffraff. I just love the way the ship has been restored. It gives you a real feeling of how it would have looked on those first early journeys. And now we take a few steps down towards the middle deck. And our first destination takes us towards steerage, the lowest class of passengers. And that immersive experience I described earlier returns. But now the experience is enhanced with scent. Going to take to Melbourne. That's going to give you a good character. To say the whole experience is something amazing. And the attention to detail is fantastic. And now the galley. I'm not sure I'm happy with the rats running past on those windows at the top. And now in the engine room, you can actually smell the coal in the air. And these fantastic replicas of the original engines give you a, a view of how it would have been here. In fact, the engines are so massive, you actually drop down to the lower deck to get the full scale of the works. Now let's return to the middle deck to explore a little bit more of life on board SS Great Britain. And now we've reached the promenade saloon, where those in first class could have stretched their legs. And around here you can find cabins, with stories being told from their actual diaries of passengers who made the journey on board SS Great Britain. You can see life for the first class passengers was a touch better than the average. Plus you can also pop in and see the captain at work. The thing that really took my breath away was the first class dining saloon. Now this really looks opulent and seems a world apart from steerage where we joined the ship. and the band played on. 
But now we traverse into another working part of the ship. And this gives you another view of how the ship would have operated. And now our final sensory experience is the ship's bakery. If you're feeling a bit peckish, your next stop could be the Dockyard Cafe. But we're pressing on because we had a little bite before at the Harborside Kitchen. And now it's time for Being Brunel, where we discover more of that great Victorian innovator, Isambard Kingdom Brunel. We'll cover Clifton and the Clifton Suspension Bridge in a later video, so don't forget to subscribe. For now we're transported back to his London home in Duke Street, Westminster. Once again, the attention to detail is superb. I have to be honest, I was thoroughly impressed with my visit to SS Great Britain, but the Bee and Brunel exhibition took it to another level. It really was the cherry on the cake. And here you can learn more about the great man himself and all of the innovations he brought to Victorian society. Once again, it's a very interactive experience. And now we get a chance for a quick sneak peek at Janice in the reflection. See ya? Be quick, she's gone. And now we come face to face with a giant Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Remember, your ticket is valid for a whole year. So if you wish to come back, if this is all too much for one visit, then you're more than welcome to. And there is so much to see because the next part of being Brunel takes you through the decision process about how they came up with the final design for SS Great Britain. It's truly fascinating and so well put together. And I have to say as a visitor experience, this is one of the best we've encountered. And I think it's really suitable for people of all ages. It really is something for everyone. Well, that brings this video to a close. I really hope you like what we put together. Don't forget to give us a like, we'd appreciate that. And I hope you enjoy your visit to SS Great Britain. Thanks so much, stay safe, stay well, happy travels.